that's what we're going to be working on let's find out what's going on with this unit to do that we're going to need a few tools number one we're going to need this Dispar usb stabilizer this is a brand new unit that i just got it's a beast with three ports now it supports m.2 key nvme devices usb-c devices usb-a on two channels and it has a sata port Aside from all these great features on the interface use, it also packs a little bit of new things in the tool itself uh, that we'll go over today. So first, let's begin by inspecting the device. It came in with the bent connector. I installed a new one on there. Just wanted to add a little extra support on the sides here on the anchors. See if we got full connection. Up here as well. We need to make sure the controller is connected. It doesn't have broken uh, pins or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I think that's the reason why uh, it was. Well, I don't think. I know it's the reason why it's not going to come up uh, ready. So let me just explain um, how this affects and why this happened to the flash drive so it came in with a broken flash drive uh, connector and um, that was replaced i figured you know simple for joints will do it um, but uh, looking at it i noticed um, this response let's uh, demonstrate it on deep spar because if we fix it you won't see how it's reacting you probably won't know uh, what to link it up with so we gotta to to power on this thing we need to plug in our power and the USB cable I'm gonna select channel B that's the middle one for USB C devices plug this in and on the screen if we go to sector map you see this new menu here for current consumption um, I used to use uh, the uh, regular USB uh, one before on many many videos um, you guys saw this thing uh, it's still a good addition if you don't have the current monitor feature on your device but the fact that they implemented that I'm super thankful for that so when we power on the device let's uh, watch what happens we got 60 to 50 milliamps that does show that there's some activity something is going on if we go into the log what do we see we see usb memory bar listed usb memory bar is a standard controller recognition uh, name when uh, either the nands are not connected or the controller is not connected fully so the controller aside from linking to the interface for the data positive negative and the power in the ground it also needs to uh have connection after uh, with an end so for all of the bus signals and command signals those are need to be linked up to the end through the circuit now if that part breaks or if that part is not connected the end will be um, not detected and if the end is not detected the firmware to initialize the device is also not going to be loading up right so that makes sense i'm going to turn off the device for now we'll come back to uh, uh, deep spar in a little bit now it's safe to inject and uh, let's see what kind of work would be involved now i did notice that uh, these had uh, these pins on the controller are very loose right and that's a really good indication that that's where the problem is now it's not necessarily the potentially only problem these are bga chips and if this board got flexed hard enough the, these uh, solder balls that hold the chips in place could be dislodged from uh, or the connection between the chip and the board could be compromised at that point we'll have to go in and check that out later if we don't get it recognized by reworking the controller but the controller itself uh, broke off in the most 
previous ways. Here's why that happens, guys. Um, if we take a SanDisk flash drive, for example, a SanDisk, sorry, all the lint that's on there, <laughs> that is now being displayed in the fine detail with this camera. If you see uh, a flash drive that's made by SanDisk, these cuts in the PCB, they designed to hold the PCB in the plastic frame. Uh, and that's what makes the board the most flexible part um, because it's pre-cut in there, okay? So it's more likely to bend here than over here, right? So when the connector is attached to the pads, you see this line falls right on the connections. So when the flexing happens, that's why these pads get ripped off so very often on sand disks. And that's where, where the sand disk would put these cuts. Lexar does not do the same thing. It puts it further up here, all right? It's not in line with the connector line, so it's further up. So if it's further up, what is at risk? We have this line going here. So we got on this side, we got these connections that potentially could be broken. We got things that, these resistors that could be broken. But on this side, we have a controller and the controller is right here. So where it flex the most, it will bend the board but the component will not bend well yet yeah, there is a little bit of play that these pins will produce but they will eventually um, put enough pressure on the uh, can on the solder that it will just let go we have a disconnected pin right here you see and that pin came off with the pad which is not a big deal because we can just jump it but if we have more of those disconnected pins taken off with the pad, that will be a problem later. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll address this, this, this one here specifically the last. But let's uh, just, at, for now, let's just um, apply some heat to it. Um, and rework this device. I'm not gonna use hot air. We'll do this whole thing just with um, um, soldering iron. There's no need for hot air in this situation. Let's go. Now we added um, more solder to it than it requires. So some headers got jumped, but that's okay because uh, this um, wick will just pick them off and uh, we can clean up the rest.
Um, since that last bat is broken, let's just get it out of there. Okay, so now our connections are all good from what it seems. I plug this back in. If we go into our control panel again, hit power. Consumption. We got this restart, restart. You see it goes to 53, 66, 79. 53, 66, 79. So something is keeps on restarting. But we don't get the memory bar anymore. So more activity, something did change. But it's still not working for us, right? So why is it not working? Well, we know that one header that was pulled by the pre by the tension um, disconnected the board from that corresponding pad uh, instead of removing the controller and linking it to uh, the pad manually we can just um, wire it directly to the source so what is the source well, let's have a look. We have this line right there break off and it goes to this pad right here. That is our source. So I'm gonna grab this wire, tin it about that much. Okay, now it's set there and we just need to turn it up here There. At this point, unless uh, we have disconnected NANDs or potentially something broken in terms of connection on other pins of the, of the controller and the pads of the controller on the board, it should work. Plug that in. Power on and look at that, we got a Lexar USB flash drive, 16 gigs recognized, we go into consumption, 79, 93, that's what we should be running at. Um, at this point, I'll uh, launch PC3000 without any uh, uh, channels attached to it and create a clone of this device. And this is the reading. So we're reading it at 24 megabytes per second. And the active state is about 93 milliamps to 100 milliamps. Cool, this is it. Well, uh, if the drive isn't full, we don't need to image the entire thing. We can go into uh, uh, the directory. Um, probably FAT32. Let's grab all the used sectors off of it. Looks like there is nothing on there. <laughs> 100 and something megabytes. We already captured that. So the case at this point is done. Uh, there's a bunch of folders. I'm gonna save them. Everything is there. The device is now fixed. Um, if you have a flash drive that doesn't work, whether you bent it, whether you uh, stepped on it, whether it just stopped working all on its own, 
if you need the content uh, recovered, like we did with this guy, um, feel free to check the link in the description. I will take you to our website where you can request the services. Thank you guys very much for watching uh, this episode and I will see you all in the next one.